That's good. <laughs> Today we're going to be going over five ways to recover files on Windows 10. And real quick, as always, before we get started, if you guys have any questions or things you want to see me cover down the line in the future, be sure to let us know down below in the comment section. But with that being said, let's get into the video. So something real quick that you need to keep in mind before we get started is that when it comes to deleted files, they aren't actually deleted. They're really just hidden from view in order to be overwritten by the PC later on down the line. Now for those of you that watch this channel a lot and hear me talk a lot, then I probably sound like a broken record right now, but honestly time is of the essence when it comes to recovering files. So the faster you act and the faster you incorporate these five things, the faster you'll have a chance of getting your files back. But now let's move on to method number one. I've talked about it before, but one of the simplest ways to actually get your files back is to check the recycle bin. So this one is a lot more effective if you have just deleted your files like just then. And honestly, a lot of people don't often check their recycle bin, but most times you can actually find what you're looking for if you just check the trash. So let's go ahead and do that now. So go ahead and double click on the recycle bin to open it and go ahead and look through all the files that are there to see if the ones that you're looking for are able to be recovered. Then go ahead and right click on the files that you want to restore and choose restore. And this will restore the file to its original location. Now you can also drag the file out of the recycle bin and drop it on a new location where it will be stored. And last but not least, you can verify that the files have indeed been restored to their original or their new location. All right, so that one's pretty easy, but now let's talk about viruses for a second. So one of the things that viruses can do is they can delete or hide your files. And this is actually called ransomware. So oftentimes if you get a virus, it'll say we've deleted or hidden your files and we'll only release them if you pay a ransom or do something that the virus wants you to do. And oftentimes what's actually been done is the files that they say have been deleted have actually just been hidden. And so what we can do is we can use the command prompt or CMD to actually retrieve our files and unhide them, which will give us access in the event of a virus infection, for example. So this method is definitely the most complex and least user friendly that I've probably ever covered on this channel, but it's certainly worth a shot. So just pay close attention. So go ahead and open the start menu and type CMD, then right click on it and select run as administrator. All right, so the command that we're going to be using is this. Now I know it looks complicated, but really what it is, is going to allow us to unhide or reveal the files that have been hidden on a particular drive. Now the only thing that's important here is that you need to replace the X in the command with the drive letter of the particular drive that you're trying to actually recover from. So this can be found by simply locating the drive in Windows Explorer and my drive letter happens to be F. So what has happened is I had a folder on my SD card labeled pictures, but it's now missing. And so what we can do is type in this command and hit enter. And again, you need to make sure you replace the X with your particular drive letter. That's really important. And now, as you can see, the folder has been replaced on my drive with all of my pictures inside. So if you've ever run into a virus or something that has claimed to deleted your files, I would highly recommend running this command on the drive and seeing if it brings the folders back. Cause I know that can be a really scary thing, but honestly, most viruses will do this and your files are just fine. They've just been hidden on the computer. So that command can really come in clutch if you're in a pinch. All right, so method number three is going to consist of using a data recovery software to recover our files for us. So there's a lot of software out there, right? You know, some are better than others, but what we're looking for is something that's advanced enough to scan all different sectors and piece together all of the different files and get as much data out of the drive as we can so that we can recover as much as we can all in one cohesive package. And for this, we're going to be using Disk Drill. So Disk Drill is awesome. I've said it before, but it's a powerful all-in-one software suite that not only recovers files, but also protects files and disks from danger in the first place. Now, something that's also really great with the advent of Disk Drill 4 for Windows is that you can recover up to 500 megabytes of files for free. So this is more than enough for documents, photos, songs, really anything, and it'll really help to get you started in your own file recovery journey. So it's, it's, it's awesome. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to use it right now. So go ahead and go down to the description and download and install Disk Drill. 
Now, one thing I need to mention is that it's strongly recommended that you download and install Disk Drill to a different drive than you're trying to recover from. So if you're trying to recover files from your C drive, for example, it's really recommended you download and install Disk Drill to some kind of external drive. Then go ahead and launch Disk Drill, which will open the data recovery panel by default. Now, real quick, just to avoid confusion, I'm gonna go over the whole UI just to make sure that you can stay on the same page with me. So in the middle here, we have the center disk list, which is where all of our disks and drives will be connected. And then on the left, we have the different panels. So we have the data recovery panel as well as the drive backup and data protection panels as well. And then on the right, we can change the recovery method and start the scan itself. Next, go ahead and select the disk or partition where the files were located in the first place from the list presented, and then click on the search for lost data button to initiate disk drills scanning algorithms. Now, once it's finished, you can review the files within the file structure here or on the categories on the left-hand side. So if you're looking for photos, just select photos and that'll help you to sort through all the different picture files, which include JPEG, PNG, Camera Raw, whatever. Now, one thing that's really important here when it comes to actually reviewing what's been found is you need to make sure that the files are previewable. And what previewable means is it'll actually show the file in its entirety inside of Disk Drill before you recover it, which will actually show whether or not that file is intact. And again, like I said, if the file has been overwritten, it will not be previewable. And so if you can preview it inside of Disk Drill, then you guaranteed 100% know that that file is recoverable. So once you find the files that you want, put a check mark next to them and choose a save location. Now, another thing, again, I strongly recommend that you export and save the files to a different location than you're trying to recover to. So if you're recovering from an SD card, export to your C drive. If you're recovering from your C drive, export to an external hard drive. Really important. Then click OK, which will recover the files to the location that you selected. All right, so now we're gonna shift gears here a little bit and talk about these last two methods which have to do with file backup. And the first one is a feature built right into Windows 10 called File History. So this feature was actually meant to replace the backup and restore feature that was built into older versions of Windows like Windows 7, and it works really well if it's been activated. So let's go ahead and do that now. So click on the File Explorer icon, and open the folder that contained the items that you want to recover. Then click the Home tab, and then click the History button. Next, go ahead and select the files or folder that you wish to restore, and navigate through time with the arrows to search for the version that you want to recover. Then click the Restore button, which will restore the file to its original location. And at this time, you can also address any naming conflicts, so if you have you know, a file that you're trying to recover that has the same name as a file in its actual original location, and you can rename them to keep both of the files intact. Now last but not least, number five, we're gonna be using the restore previous versions feature built into Windows 10 to actually look at the different previous versions of a file or folder that we can pull from in the event of a recovery. But of course, this depends if it's been activated or not, but we can go ahead and activate it ourselves inside of Windows 10 by following these steps. So go ahead and open the start menu, type system protection and hit enter. Then choose a hard drive under protection settings and click configure. Then select turn on system protection and click okay. So now this will allow you to actually use the restore previous versions feature that's built into Windows 10 to restore files or folders to their previous state. And then to actually do this, you can simply navigate to a file or folder on that drive, right click it, select restore previous version, and choose the version at whichever date that you want to recover to. And that's it. Those are five ways that you can recover files on your Windows 10 computer. Now I know I've talked about some of these methods in previous videos, but that's for a good reason. They're extremely powerful, and if you implement all five of these, there's a really good chance that you'll get all of your files back. But that's gonna be it for this video. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or issues with today's tutorial, always be sure to let us know down below in the comments section. My name is Andy, and thank you for watching.